equations. So there are two equations for this part of the section of what we're doing. Um, the first equation is the period of a spring. So we're going to call this Ts equals 2 pi times the square root of uh, m over k. And here's what all those symbols mean. Capital T is period, just like it was for the pendulum. The lowercase s is just to remind you that this is for a spring. You don't plug any numbers into it. You're just using it to remind yourself this is a spring and not a pendulum. Okay? M is mass. And K is spring constant. The other equation has to do with the restoring force. Now, there is a restoring force equation for pendulums. Unfortunately, that equation is complicated. Maybe it's not unfortunate for you. That equation is complicated, and it's more than the mathematical prowess that I think most of you have. So we're not going to do anything with the uh, restoring force of pendulums. But it does exist. The restoring force of strings, however, it's much easier to deal with, and it's this equation here. Fs equals negative kd. Sometimes I've written it as kx. It works the same either way. Uh, F, by the way, is force, just as a reminder. The S, once again, stands for spring constant. Or, sorry, 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 sorry. The S stands for spring. The K is, once again, spring constant. And the D is displacement. Yes, it's not part of the K. Yeah, it's its own. So technically, if it's helpful, it's more like this. Can you apply it to both K and... No, it's its own thing. You'll see what happens to it. Generally, it goes away. Generally, it goes away. Not always, but usually. All right, A. What's the spring constant of the spring? Now, this is, can be a little confusing for people because you're looking at this and you're like, oh, Mr. B, spring constants in both, so how do I know which one to use? This equation is used for doing oscillations, bouncing up and down. This equation is used for finding the restoring force. Usually, it's easier to use the restoring force to find spring constant than to use the period to find the spring constant. You can do it either way, but we will usually start with this one. And so let's look at what we have. We have that it's stretched out 0.13. So here's my spring with nothing on it. It's like that. And then I put this weight on, and it stretches out. And that weight is 0.55 kilograms, so M equals 0.55 kg. And it stretches out from here to here. 0.13 meters, and that's the displacement. But because it's stretching down, I'm going to call it negative 0.13 meters. And that's all it gives me other than to ask for what the spring constant is. So I'm looking at this, and I'm like, okay, I've got mass, I've got displacement, the mass is stretching it out. We know how far it stretches out. That kind of looks like this. That's, that's more of that than this. We don't know anything about period. So this maybe looks the better way to go. So that's where I'm going to start. So F, I don't know anything about F, so I'm going to leave it blank for now, equals negative KD. D is the displacement. Displacement is downward, 0.13 meters. So that gives me that for starters. Okay, well, I need to plug in something here for uh, Fs. I need to plug in something for the force of the spring. Well, what I know is that the spring's force is caused by gravity. Gravity is stretching it out, and so because of it, it stretches the spring out, which makes the spring pull in the opposite direction. So the restoring force is caused by gravity stretching the spring out in this case. 
Um, that's what gives it restoring force in the first place. So in order to find the restoring force, I need to know what the force of gravity is. So I'm using Fg equals Mg. And I am giving you that equation. You don't have to have that memorized in case you don't. So M is 0.55, G is 9.8. And when you multiply those together, you get 5.39. Now, that is the force of gravity. We just got done saying the force of gravity is what causes the force of the spring to exist. So that's what we're plugging in here. For the force of the spring, we're plugging in 5.39. Okay, the negatives are going to cancel because you've got two negatives multiplied together and negative times a negative is positive. So all I have to do to get that 0.13 to the other side is to divide both sides by it. And that gives me 41.5. Sorry, it should just be newtons per meter. And there you go. There's how you do the first part. So basic setup. Set up the equation. Find K. To do that, you'll have to find the force of gravity acting on it first. And then that should give you enough of what you need. Okay. That brings me to part two. So part two, part B, if it's lifted a displacement of 0.5 meters and allowed to oscillate, what is its period? Okay, so from where it was, so this is A down here. What happens in B now is it's lifted Point 0.5 meters. So from here to here, it's lifted point 0.5 meters. That's what's going on in part B. Okay, so first of all, my spring constant is still 41.5. I'm still putting a mass of 0.55 kilograms on. But this displacement here is tricky to me. I'm not really sure what that number is because I already have a displacement for the first part, right? I already know that when I put the weight on, it stretched it out by 0.13. So here's where you have to be careful with the reading. Who or what is stretching this out? Me. In the first part, it was stretched out by the uh, weight. But in this one, I'm stretching it out. When I change the displacement, it's not called displacement, it's called amplitude. So this is the amplitude. Because from here, it's going to bounce up and down. So the 0.5, that's the maximum it gets displaced. That would be the amplitude for that. So first of all, what equation am I going to use? Well, I'm not going to use this first one anymore because, one, I already know what the spring constant is. And, two, I'm looking for period. Okay, I'm looking for capital T. This isn't going to help me with capital T at all. And there's not anything I need to do with that anymore. I found the spring force. I found the uh, spring constant, displacement. Like, I got all that stuff, so I don't need that anymore here. So the equation I'm going to be using is this other one. Period of a spring is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So period of the spring is equal to 2 pi times m, which is 0.55, over k, which is uh, 
41.5. Notice, I didn't plug in my 0.5 anywhere. That's because I don't need amplitude. I don't care how much I stretch it out by. None of that matters. I put it there as a red herring. I want you to get used to thinking about what is it that you actually need and what do you not need. Okay? You do not need the amplitude for this. So now I just got to solve this out. So first thing I'm going to do is 0.55 divided by 41.5. When I do that, I get 0 0.0132. Square root that answer. And I get 0.12. Times, sorry, I'm not done yet. Yep, I'm not done yet. Let me try again. 2 pi times 0.12. So now you multiply that by 2, multiply by pi, and that gives you a period of the spring of 0.72 seconds. And there you go.